Hi, welcome to this tutorial, the second in my series on inverse trig functions. And in this tutorial, what we're going to look at is the inverse of cos x. Now, I've drawn part of the graph of y equals cos x. It's a wave function like this. I've drawn it going from minus pi to pi. That's in radians or in degrees. This would be minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees. And we've got a range going from minus 1 to 1. The graph would normally be a solid curve, but I've just done a dotted line, as you'll see later why I've done this. But uh, if we're looking at the inverse cos of x, it's written like this as y equals arc cos x, or simply y equals cos with a little minus 1 as a power here x. It's not really a power, but we just pronounce it inverse cos x. Okay, now we should be familiar with inverse functions, how they're related graphically to a particular relationship like this one here, y equals cos x. What happens is that for any relationship, as I showed in the previous tutorial, that we should know that if you've got y equals some value f of x, say, then the inverse of f of x, f to the minus 1 of x, is always a reflection in the line y equals x. So in order to get the inverse of cos x, all we've got to do is reflect the graph of y equals cos x then in the line y equals x. And if we do this, we get something looking like this. The graph then of y equals arc cos x. And if I put on values on the axes, some of the key points, you can see that the 1 here gets reflected to 1 over here. And the minus 1 here gets reflected to the minus 1 on the x-axis here. So what we have is that the domain of arc cos x goes between minus 1 and 1. Now, what we've got here is a function for cos x because for any value of x in the domain, there is just one value in the range. Like for instance this, if I just took, say, this particular value of x and came down here, you can see that you get this one particular value in the range. But I want the inverse cos of x to be also a function and it's not at the moment because if I take any value in the domain, let's say, remember the domain goes from minus 1 to 1, so let's say I take a point like this one, you can see that I either get this value of y or I can come down here and I get this value of y, more than 1. So at the moment this is not a function. So what I've got to do in order to make y equals cos x and its inverse a function is to take part of the graph of y equals cos x. And the part that I'm going to take is this. Now, if I take this part of the graph and reflect this in the line y equals x, I get this particular one. And so we now have that for any value in the domain from minus 1 to 1, we get one particular value in the range. If we're on this side from 0 to minus 1, you can see we come up here and we would get, say, this one particular value in the range. So what we've got then is a function now for the inverse cos of x, or arc cos x. It's got a domain then that goes from minus 1 to 1 and a range that goes from naught to pi. And any value of y in this range is called the principal value. So in summary, what we've got is a graph looking like this. The graph of y equals arc cos x or y equals inverse cos of x with a domain that goes from minus 1 to 1 inclusive. The principal values of y are from any value from 0 here to 
pi and this would be the range y going from naught to pi inclusive and it's very important that you learn this particular graph and the range for the principal value of y because we're going to need this when it comes to solving inverse trigonometric equations later on. Okay, well for now this brings us to the end of this tutorial and in the next video I'll run through what the graph of arctan x looks like.